Suray's line of budget anamorphic lenses for Super 35 and Micro Four Thirds have been out for quite a while, but I only managed to get my hands on them recently. And testing this one, the 35mm, I think this is probably one of the most exciting and fun lenses I've been able to use, and probably one of my top recommendations for the Sony ZV-E10 or the Sony FX30. So the Sony ZV-E10 is a great little camera. Um, it's a budget vlog style camera, and it's definitely primarily for video, but it is very capable of taking photos, video on that coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, and it's great. It comes with a little kit lens that's fine, it can get the job done, um, but if I'm ever to recommend how to upgrade your camera and to get better image quality out of your camera, glass is the way to go. And these budget anamorphic lenses from Suray are a fantastic place to start. So they're typically around $700, I think. They, they, they vary in price quite frequently. But recently, this one and the 75mm were both on the uh, B&H deal zone. If you don't know about B&H's deal zone, by the way, you've got to check that out because there's just crazy deals every single day. Um, and this was on there for $400. And 75 was, the 75 millimeter was down to $400 as well, but I thought I'd just start with the 35, and if I liked it, I might go for the 75 as well, um, just to sort of have those two options. My only complaint with this lens physically that I've had so far was that the lens cap that comes with it is kind of like rounded on the top. So if you leave your lens on the desk, uh, it, it wouldn't stay flat. It would kind of like wobble around but I just replaced the lens cap and, and we're good to go there. So even though there are plenty of other cameras and plenty of other lenses to play around with, I, whenever I went on vacation to up to Hocking Hills in Ohio, we stayed at Ravenwood Castle, which is an awesome place, by the way. Um, this is the only camera I took and this is the only lens I took, just to challenge myself to shoot with it, see what I could get and see what kind of content I could get. I, there was no pre-production, there was no planning. Usually I like to put together a story and add lots of pre-production to the mix and make sure that it's a, a finely crafted piece. Um, but for this I thought, let's just go film and see what we can see what we can get. So this thing seriously impressed me for a couple of reasons. The image is beautiful. I think the colors are really cool. I love the anamorphic flares that come out of this. And um, I don't know if this is the same across all of their lenses, but this one in particular has a really sort of, it's like a teal type of color to their to their anamorphic flares. Um, and it was just really fun to use. That was the most important thing is that I had an external monitor on here and I was sort of able to monitor the, the actual footage with the 1.33 times squeeze. And just walking around, it just made me so excited to film. And if you've watched any of my other videos, that's a, a huge reason for me to purchase any gear, is that it makes me excited to use it. It makes me excited to create and, and produce content. Um, now this isn't for everybody. I think if you're doing YouTube videos like this, if you've got a studio and you're trying to do talking headshots, very rarely is anamorphic going to be the thing that you're wanting to go for. It's not clinically sharp. Um, it does flare, it does have issues, and um, there is some chromatic aberration, but not, not a huge amount. You know, so it's got issues, but these are all within the creative sphere of making something uh, more artistic. Uh, but if you're going for that crisp and clinical look that you might get with a lot of Sigma art lenses in particular, um, you know, if, if that's the only thing you're going for, then this maybe is not for you. 
But if you want to make something creative and different and, and, and more unique, or a little bit more fun and, and different, this is a fantastic way to go. So this has not been a super in-depth review, right? I'm not looking at charts, I'm not putting it up against color checkers, I'm not doing flare tests in a studio environment, and um, that's not really what I was going to use it for personally. Um, and honestly, I've, I'm very limited on time, so I'm not going to do that today. But if you want to see that, I'd love to do it, or go check out Gerald and Dunn's video on it. He has all of that there. Um, this is more just to talk about the creative element that you can have with a lens like this, even on a cheap camera like this. And I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I think it's a fantastic tool to have in your arsenal. I think I'd be more than happy to use this on paid shoots um, if someone is wanting an anamorphic uh, look to their image. I think it's a fantastic lens, and especially for the price when it's on sale, it's really hard to beat. So if it goes on sale again, I really encourage you to pick it up. One, for fun. The fun factor of it was just fantastic. Um, and two, the image is great. I think it's. I think it, it adds a unique creative look um, that has that vintagey vibe, but the anamorphic look at the same time for just a few hundred dollars. I can't really recommend it more. So thanks for watching. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I encourage you to leave a like, drop a comment, um, and maybe even subscribe as we continue to grow this channel. So uh, go create some art, and I hope you have a wonderful day.